Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday School, and um, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. We give you praise because you are good. We thank you for the joy of salvation. We thank you for your word, King of glory, that you sent to us every time. Ancient of days, we ask that you receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we have come before you this morning to learn at your feet. Father, we are asking that none of us will live here the same. We ask that you will glorify your name in our lives, O Lord. That is that at the end of it all, we will say thank you, Lord, for allowing us to learn at your feet, O Lord. Blessed be your name, Daddy. Thank you for hearing and answering us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome once again to Sunday School. Um, we want to thank God for the lesson of last week. Last week, we were talking about integrity. Integrity. And um, for me, I believe that it's very fundamental in our Christian work that as believers, we should work in integrity. Let our yes be our yes and our nay be our nay. Um, we have seen situations where, um, like we were discussing, some people, when they hear that you are a Christian, in natural fact, before you say anything further, they take off because they say they've been deceived by people who are so-called Christians. But I want to believe that um, that will not be our story as believers in the house here in Jesus' name. All right, today we are looking at the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes, and we are looking at the poor and the mourner. Jesus Christ spoke about the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. So today we are looking at the poor and the mourner. Who exactly are the poor and the mourner? It's not just enough for us to know that blessed are the poor, eh, for they shall see the kingdom of God, for theirs is the kingdom of God. We want to know who are the poor. And then when we talk about the mourner, who is the mourner? Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, our Bible reading for today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. I will encourage someone, anyone who is in the house, please read for us. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. Very quickly, Matthew 5, 1 to 4. Please read for us if you are there. Promised land. If you are there, read for us. Don't allow me to call someone. It's not necessary. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 1 to 4. I read from the New James Version. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciple came unto him. And he opened his mouth and told them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord bless Amen. the reading of his word. Amen. So the poor in the spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God, and the ones that mourn will be comforted. Our Bible, mem our memory verse is taken from Psalm chapter 51, verse 17. And it says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, that will not despise. The sacrifices of God if you want to give God a sacrifice, the Bible is telling us that the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, <clears throat> thou will not despise. Psalm 51 verse 17. If you are extraordinarily happy, you might describe what you are feeling as beatitude. The noun beatitude refers to a state of great joy. Being blessed, or at least feeling blessed, is often linked to beatitude. Beatitude inherited its blessedness from the Latin word beatus, meaning rich, happy, and blessedness. The corresponding word in the original Greek is makarior, with the same meaning. In the Bible, the beatitudes are a series of eight blessings spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus used the word to refer to more than a superficial happiness. 
It's not talking about the happiness you have when you just bought a house or the happiness you have when you have just eaten and you are full. In this context, blessed refers to a state of spiritual well being and prosperity. The Beatitudes describe the ideal disciple and his rewards, both present and future. Praise the Lord. Now, when we look at this beatitude today, we are just looking at the one who is poor in spirit and the mourner. Now, what did Jesus Christ say about the poor in spirit? He said that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who are the poor in spirit? Who are the poor in spirit? If you have an answer, can you quickly respond? Who are the poor in spirit? One or two persons very quickly. Who are the poor in spirit? Who do you think are the poor in spirit? Antibuki Olubenga, thank you for responding the last time by reading. Who are the those poor who, in spirit? Those who depend on God. Those who what depend on, on God. Yes, sir. Yes. Any other contribution? The poor in spirit. Who are the poor in spirit? They are the humble and lonely in their, they are humble and they are lonely in their own eyes. You just see them, they are very humble. We keep to themselves. Okay, humble, humble and lowly in God's eyes. Okay, Hi. now the poor, the poor in spirit are those who feel a deep sense of spiritual need and understand their emptiness before God. We can see that in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2. They see a deep sense of their own spiritual need and they understand their emptiness before God. They are humble and lowly in their own eyes. James chapter 4, verse 6. God will resist the proud, but he's, he gives grace to the humble. If you are proud, God resists you. But if you are humble, he gives grace to the humble. And we know that grace is empowerment. Now, we are told that the poor in spirit is the one who understands that they are spiritually empty. There are a lot of people that feel that they are someone in their own eyes. They feel that, you know, they are good. In actual fact, the, 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 the spiritually proud can be likened, you know, as we see, to, to that man who stood before God and decided to tell God everything he had done. How he used to pay his tithe, how he used to fast, how he used to... And so he did not see his need for God. He didn't see his need for God. The poor in spirit is someone who sees their need for God. Their heart is yearning because they know that on their own, they are nothing. They see their wants. They bewail their guilt and test after a redeemer. Psalm 51 verse 17. So they, 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 they know that come without God, they are nothing. They see that they are sinners and that they need a redeemer. You know, I've seen some of my um, friends or acquaintances who are, let me say, like Muslims. I've seen at least one very wonderful lady, wonderful. But every time I'm still praying to God that she will come to know the Lord, or I've prayed for her and I'm still believing in my heart, rather, that she will come to know the Lord. When you see her, she, she will not see anything wrong that she's doing. And that's the truth because, you know, she's one of those ones that they feel is quiet. You know, she's quiet. And you know the funny thing? She will not struggle with you over anything. When you talk to her, she's one of those persons that will do what you tell her without arguing. Now, there's a tendency for such people to begin to feel that on their own, they are okay. In actual fact, I remember when I would speak with, to her about Christ, she would say, oh, Madam Thelma, because we used to work together. She would say, Madam Thelma, just be doing your own. Let, please, please, don't just bring up this issue of the uh, religion. Just, you're just stay, you know, your own. She, she believes that what she's doing is okay. And you will see her, she will go religiously and go and make those your prayers. She will pray. She will, she will go. Once it's time, she will go there. Now, there's a tendency to begin to feel that because you're, after all, I'm not doing anything that's wrong. I'm not stealing from anybody. I'm not doing this one. To begin to feel that on your own, you are okay. We must see our need 
for our Redeemer. Praise the Lord. There must be emptiness before there can be fullness. We are talking about who are the poor in spirit. There must be emptiness because, before there can be fullness. And so poverty of spirit precedes riches and grace in the kingdom of God. Now, like we can see that in John chapter 12, verse 24. Like I was saying the day we were doing this review, I said, you see, if you feel that you are full in a particular area, God will leave you. We are talking about the poor are the ones who will inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, it's the kingdom of God. Later, we are going to look at what the kingdom is. So if you begin to feel that you are full in any area, you no longer need God. God will keep quiet and be watching you. Being poor in spirit, is, it, it, it passes through every area of life. It's not just about salvation. I want to say, even in the area of your health, even in the area of your finances, even in the area of, you know, family needs, even in the area of whatever you can think of, we still need God. If you do not see that you are poor, you will not hear God because you feel that in your own wisdom, we know it. Or at times we do that. I keep on asking people, most times when you are in a situation, what is the first thought that comes to your mind? I'll give you an example. If a child, for instance, your child is not feeling well, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? Is it to lay your hands on that child and pray and say, God, Jesus, thank you, because by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. And then apply whatever you want to apply. If you want to apply medication or you want, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, is our first thought God, or is our first thought what we think we know, we sort it out? Because most times, what you think you know, we sort it out, may not be the answer. I'm praying that the Lord will help us to see our poverty so that we can experience his riches and his kingdom in Jesus' name. Now, there, can be, there must be emptiness, like I said, before there can be fullness. We are to be emptied of our selfish pride, self-reliance, Sinful thoughts and actions. Don't think that you know it all. We are to die daily to ourselves and be emptied moment by moment. Anytime you try to prove to God that you know it, you'll just be in trouble. Because he will look at you, struggle and struggle until you give up. I remember, you know, when you think of our children, I think there was a day, was it my daughter? Or, you know, you see them at times, they want to put on a um, shoe or something. And you want to help them. No, especially at that time when they are trying to learn by themselves. They want to struggle with you. They want to do it by themselves. <laughs> so at times you just leave them. With children, you leave them. They struggle and struggle and struggle. They now get to a point where they find out that they cannot do it. And they begin to cry in frustration. Ah! Then you come in and you assist them. So some of us are like that. We feel that we know it. In any aspect of life, like I said, you think that finance, you have read all the finance books in this world, and you think that that's the answer. And God is just watching and saying, okay, or you go and do your own thing. Ask him. He will direct you. He will tell you which books to read. In actual fact, even when you read the book, you still need to ask him to say, Father, this is what I think I should do. Is it okay? And if you have his peace, then you move. You must depend on him. Being poor means that we are depending on him for our sustenance. Because on our own, we cannot do it. Praise the Lord. Emptying is not the end, rather the beginning. We are emptied in order to be filled. When we are emptied before God, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in every aspect of life, God then fills us. He fills us. When it comes to the issue of salvation, how we are to deal in our day-to-day -day affair, God can then fill us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In that, he's declaring that before we can enter God's kingdom, we must recognize our worthlessness and the inability of our own works to save us. You know, at times, maybe we have offended God and then instead of us to go before our maker, you know, seek for the forgiveness that comes in Jesus, through Jesus, at times we try to use works, you know, to make up for what we have done. Yes, works is a part of what we do because faith without works is dead, but works in itself cannot make up for what we have done. The first place to go to is to accept that the blood of Jesus is still there to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you have sinned, instead of trying to, to use work or trying to now do more activities in church, maybe that will make you feel good and you feel you are not doing something for the Lord or trying to read two Bible passages that will not is not even entering your heart as you are reading it. 
first of all, just go to the cross, ask Jesus to cleanse you from every form of unrighteousness. We have an and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, why is the kingdom of heaven for the poor in spirit? Why is the kingdom of heaven for the poor in spirit? The kingdom of heaven is for the poor in spirit because they seek it and therefore find and abide in it. Like I was saying, what you don't think that you need, you are not going to seek for it. The kingdom of heaven is about the word of God. You know, Jesus Christ is talking about the kingdom. He said that the kingdom of heaven is within us. So the kingdom of heaven, we can find in the word of God. When you see Jesus, you have seen God. When we see the word of God, we have seen Jesus. So when we seek the kingdom of God, it is only the poor in spirit that we seek for the kingdom. They are the ones who will go and study the word to know what God is saying concerning a particular issue. Instead of running up and down, running up and down, you know, the first step is our salvation. But what of in the area of our health? What is God saying about your health? What is God saying about, you know, your finances, like I said? What is God saying about every area of your life, about your marriage? Instead of running up and down and struggling, why don't you go and seek for what he's saying? He's only the one who is poor that is looking for what to eat. If you feel you are not poor, no, you will just be there and be feeling full. You know, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, was talking to the church. He said, you are lukewarm. Why are you lukewarm? He said, because you, you feel you are full. You are okay by yourself. And then he began to admonish them, come and buy of me good. <laughs> God is talking to all of us believers that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Let's not ever begin to feel that we know too much. God is God all by himself. He's our father. He's our maker. He's our manufacturer. He knows how we can succeed on this earth. He knows how we can become all that he wants us to be. Let's seek our maker and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Okay? So the poor in spirit is the one that knows that they need God and they seek him and they find him and they abide in the kingdom. This virtue is opposed to the pride of the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, verse 10 to 14, who was feeling that after all, I'm fasting, I am praying, I'm doing everything, I'm tithing. <laughs> and God said, Said concerning the one who was sitting in his hand and saying, have mercy upon me, that that one, that one is the one who received mercy. That one is that kind of person who will enter into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Now, the kingdom of heaven essentially refers to salvation. Salvation. A kingdom. What is a kingdom? A country, a state, or territory that is ruled by a king or queen. So the kingdom of heaven, when we are talking about the kingdom of God, we are talking about a place that is ruled by God. Oh, what blessedness. Oh, what joy for each and every one of us to have this kingdom living within us. Because where God rules, there is no pain. Where God rules, you are more than a conqueror all the time. Where God rules, you are short of victory. Where God rules, you are short of peace. The kingdom of heaven, like we are told in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you are poor in the spirit, look at what you'll be experiencing. You experience righteousness, you experience joy, and you experience peace. There's nothing that I love so much as my peace. I used to tell people, I said, anything that would take away my peace, I don't like it at all. <laughs> Recently. So God be the glory, I went to, um, I went to the clinic with uh, someone who lives with me. So we, we checked, she checked her, her, her BP and I went and I checked mine. And um, the, the nurse there, because when I took my son some time ago um, to that same clinic, I told them that I believe that God heals. And so when they checked my BP and it found out that it was, it was uh, good, I was saying, I, I looked at the nurse and the nurse said, I know now. He said, your, he, said he was telling me, he said, your BP is like that of a child, you know? And I was telling them, I said, me, I don't like anything that stresses me. If it's too much, once anything that I cannot solve, I know that I cannot solve it. After, the only person who can solve it is God. Worry will not take me anywhere. So why don't I just experience the peace that comes with the kingdom of God? When we are poor in spirit, we know that that matter 
that you are trying to struggle with, it is not for you to handle. It is not for you to stress yourself over it. Why don't you hand it over to God? And know that there is somebody who can give you the riches that will grant you peace and joy in that particular situation. Praise the Lord. Okay? Salvation is by grace, true faith, not of works. We see that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. We must recognize our sinfulness before we can understand our need for a savior. We must admit our spiritual poverty before we can receive the spiritual riches that God offers. We must, in short, be poor in spirit. Now, who are those that mourn? Who are those that mourn? We we'll go quickly to verse 4, Matthew 5, verse 4. Who are the people that mourn? The people who mourn are those who mourn over their sin. You know, it can have two meanings. One is those who are afflicted by loss of friends or possession. But then, from what we see in that scripture, we believe that Jesus is talking more about those who mourn over their sin. People who mourn over their sin. Genuine repentance over sin. There is a way that the Amplified Version puts the repentance of, um, of uh, Judas Iscariot before he went to go and kill himself. He said he just had guilt. You know, it was a little above guilt that he was feeling about what he had done. Some of us, we just show small guilt and then we just move on. When we repent, there is genuine mourning over what we have done that it is wrong. And God will help all of us in Jesus' name. You know, we can become so used to the Holy Spirit and so used to God that we begin to gloss over sin and not see sin for what it is. Now, blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. When you genuinely mourn over sin, the Lord will comfort us. Christ came to preach repentance, to induce men to mourn over their sins and to forsake them. It is, probable, it is probable that he had the letter particularly in view that is talking about those who mourn over sin. At the same time, it is true that the gospel can only give true comfort to those in affliction. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. The term mourn means to experience deep grief. In keeping his theme of spiritual blessedness, Jesus seems to indicate that this mourning is due to grief over sin. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, the people who agree, why are there blessings for those who mourn? The people who agree with God about the evil of their own heart can attain an enviable state of blessedness. Praise the Lord. Now, the Holy Spirit comforts people who mourn. We have heard about the Holy Spirit this morning. In John chapter 14, verse 16, we are told that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit comforts people that mourn. Those who are honest about their own sin are humble enough to ask for forgiveness and healing. Some of us are just seeking God because we want temporary relief from whatever we are going through. How do I know that? Look at the story of Saul in the Bible, King Saul. When he was confronted for what he had done, uh, it's the people. He first of all, he had an excuse. Then after having the excuse of, or excuse of the fact that it was the people, then when someone wanted to leave, he said, just follow me now so that at least uh, before the people, he will still look good. Now, there are some of us who, when we come before God, we're asking for, for mercy because we don't want God to, to afflict us or we don't want the enemy to afflict us. Yes, so it's a part of the reasons why as believers at times we repent. But more than that, we need to repent because we know that what we have done is wrong. And we want God to come true for us. We want God to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blessing is not upon all that mourn, but upon those who mourn in reference to sin. They shall be comforted by the discovery and appropriation of God's pardon. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, I want to ask us a simple question as we round up very quickly. Let us discuss the proper way to show remorse for doing something wrong. Can one or two persons answer? What is the proper way to discuss, to show remorse rather, for doing something wrong? If you have done something wrong, what should we do? Is there anybody that can answer for us? Because of time, please, quickly. What's the proper way to show remorse if you have done something that is wrong? What do you think is the proper way? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think the proper way is to first of all apologize. Thank you. And repent of it. Thank you, ma'am. You bring that apology and you repent of it. Thank you, ma'am. Can I ask one more question based on what you have said? What does it mean to repent of it? 
not going back to it again, not mm, doing awesome. that same thing again. Awesome. God bless you, man. The first thing is to apologize. <laughs> you know, there are some of us that find it very difficult to say sorry. <laughs> May God help all of us in Jesus' name to apologize. Don't try to defend it. Don't try to defend that sin. Let's be like David. We studied about it in some of um, in, in some of the recent uh, Bible study uh, uh, sessions that we had. Let's be like David. Apologize and not go back to it. Ah, that's a, that's a serious one for us believers. We must learn not to go back to it. Any other person? Any other person? One more person quickly, please. My sister has said, apologize. Repent. Which other way can we show remorse for sin? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think in addition to that, um, we need to actually acknowledge the particular sin and in some cases, uh, depending on the instance, we may need to do a, um, is it retribution? How do, um, recompensation. Restitution. 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 Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. I agree with you. In, in some cases, we need to restitute. That's actually not going back to it. Uh, for instance, if you stole somebody's uh, a, a book before, the Holy Spirit convicted you, and you find out that um, it's wrong. Uh, you now say, I've apologized, and God has forgiven me. But that book, every day when you come out, the book is looking at you. Take it back to the owner. Take it back. The Holy Spirit will help us, because that one is another you know, discussion on its own. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us in that issue of restitution to know what to restitute. Some we will end with prayers of mercy, asking God for forgiveness, but some you have to go and restitute as a sign of genuine repentance. So don't go back to it. And then um, there's something that uh, Pastor Tunji always talks about, you know, uh, for certain kinds of uh, situations also, we need to have accountability partners. You know, there are certain things that you know you find yourself doing over and over again. So it's important to find a believer that you can say, and say this is something that I know I've struggled with too. Please help me pray. And then if instead of me to, if I feel as if I'm going to do this again, I will come to you, or even the accountability partner should call you from time to time to say, how are you doing on this particular matter? Say we are making progress, so, you know? Because that's why we are there. When we confess our faults one to another, the Bible says we are healed. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage us to be people who are poor in the spirit and that we should genuinely mourn over sin and repent of unrighteousness. And I pray that as we do so, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I pray that we also begin to experience the kingdom of God, and I will be comforted for everything that will pass through the Holy Spirit to help us to come out of it and will be strong believers, you know, taking territories for the kingdom of God. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. And so, Father, we thank you for your word that we have heard today. We give you praise. We ask that your presence, O Lord, King of glory, will shield us. We ask, O Lord, King of glory, that you will help us to genuinely repent of sins. And Lord, King of glory, we ask also, King of Lord, that you help us to be people who are not proud, but poor in spirit, O oh Lord, so that you can lift us up in your genuine riches. Blessed be your name, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You can greet one another. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Thank you so much, Sister Thelma. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Good morning. 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 Good morning.